Hi guys, I'm Jack Boyle, your Vice CEO of Calair. Anyways, what I'm about to do is I'm going to give you a simple tutorial uh, of um, how to use your keycard system, book a flight, fly the flight, land it, and then file your prep. That's my intention today. I'm using quite a lot of programs for this flight for my system. I'm actually using three different um, things. I think three. Give me a minute. Mm, okay, no. I'm using Plan G. Um, I'm also using Vamas FMC and I'm also using um, FSFO okay. Flight Simulator First Officer That's it Okie dokie um, These are the type of programs I'm going to be using um, today This is a, what I call a fully loaded one I'm using all my toys apart from my yoke um, Unfortunately time's against me and the yoke has to come downstairs set up and I've got a house to myself to now but I've only got it for a short period of time and you've got a screaming two year old it does not help having him pulling the throttles when you're trying to land Right, um, the first thing I'm going to teach you to do is go to the website um, where to find the key cars, where to download it, how to download it um, I'll quickly brief that for you um, What I will say to you before you do anything you must have a programme called FSUIP you must have before that. you can use any of the KCAS system. It's available for download anywhere. If you need it, contact myself or Alan or anyone who can point you in the right direction where you're needed to go to get it. Um, we'll also help you install it as well if you need to. Because you need that for the KCAS system to communicate with the tracking system. As I said, my plan is, is to show you all this and hopefully it will all turn out too well. I'll go through a bit uh, with some of my toys that I'm playing with today. Um, you probably won't have the same setup I've got, where everybody's setup's different, and you use it to whatever you want. I've got a tablet sitting down here, um, I'll show you a wee picture of that. I've also got my small monitor, um, which is directly right underneath the webcam here. This is where I fly the sim from, everything in the cockpit, etc., runs from here. I've also got my big screen at the top, which I am getting to use because nobody else is in here and I run everything else on top of that my Plan G, the website, the key car system the FMC, the whole works all runs off that even the charts that I get from the, uh, what do you call it online all shows up there so that I can keep a visual up there and down there when I'm not using that I use my tablet for that provided it works Okay, you know, hopefully this is exactly what you're looking for um, and hopefully it's going to be a bit of help to you this is Jack Boyle with ICO, I'll see you just shortly. Hey, yeah, and welcome back here. Now as you can see is the website in the background, and as you can see I'm now selecting under the operations source for the key cars instructions. Anything that you need or require um, is available here for you to use. Um, would you call it for the key car setup if this video uh, runs a bit too quick for you? So as you can see, go over there now where to find your download section, go to your pilot centre, click on to your downloads, over here you'll see the key cars up the top here, and down below here we'll actually see the other aircraft um, that are available for you. So let's click on that, and then it should automatically start downloading. By the way, I'm using Google Chrome, as you can see down the bottom left hand corner. I've already installed it, so here it is here, where it's filed, where I've kept it, so I'm opening up my WinZip for it. Clicking on it, we open it up and let one zip do its thing. And then we get it to this point here. Let's get rid of that. And there we go. Click on that, and you should be self installed. It's a good wee system for you to use, it's easy as that. And then you should have this. This is the KCAS tracking system, so click on info. If it works, that is. Here we go, click on there. As you can see, my system is rather really slow. Try again. There we go. So you enter in your user ID, your password, and um, the links here. And um, would you call me sure all these parts down here are ticked? And enter in the website that's at the top. And once you're done, click save. Easy as that. As you can see, I'm just going to leave it on there so you can have a look. 
So that's it. That's the easiest thing to do to sell your key cars. Really simple, quick and easy. No problem with that at all. Right, so now we want to go into here and we're going to show you how to book a flight. So here we go in there, we're going to flight booking. Once it loads up. If it loads up. Yep, here we go. So we went to flight booking. Now as you can see here, I've already been down here, so this is my last end, uh, destination of where my location is, as you can see here. So I'm going to uh, search here. So what it does here, it searches up the locations of all the flights that are available at this um, airport. If you click on the wee, um, what do you call magnifying glass, brings up the route that's there, gives you some information on the route, some stuff to do with fuel and that as well. Now once you do it, you just click on, that's wee symbol here, on the right hand side, as you can see it's marked up an aircraft already, that means it's already booked, that's done by myself already, so this is the key card, to get it, click on that, click on there, you should get the green text one, and then another one that's put above, when you get the green text, click on your search, up should come your flight details, just give it a quick check, make sure that all the details are there, it's correct for your flight, and once you're happy, click play. Oh, this tends to do this sometimes, and if you've got key cards, it always tells you to check your flight level, so all it is, as I've done there, just deleted one zero, put it back in, hit play, and you can see it's starting to record my flight now. Very simple, very easy system, no hassles, hopefully, most time. So that's the easy as using your key cards. That's the first part over. Now, I'm going into here, is, this is my new part, um, is where I'm now doing the flight planning. This is just the standard stuff that um, we can all use. As we know, the airport that we're in just now is VTBD, um, Bangkok International. Um, what do you call it? Or a gate, whatever I've just said there. And then, OK. And where we're going to go next, um, EGPF uh, for Glasgow. That's the route that we're going to be flying today. So just click on that. Um, whoops, sorry, try that. Right, delete EGPF. Hey, getting good at this. Um, for this flight today, I normally use IFR, but I'm using VFR because I don't want too much information with the ATC just now, because this is just a tutorial for you, um, so that I can get used to flying A to B using whatever tools that we've got available here. So this is the basic way to do it, simple as that. That's on your flight planning for the flight. As you can see there, there are the routes. Keep a note of the, um, what do you call it, um, all these um, waypoints um, they're available on your kneeboard because um, you might use them if you plan to use VAS, MS, MS, MFC or use the Plan G so we'll get rid of that and that's as easy as that right, save the file just do the usual yep, and there we go and I'm saying that now because I'm not actually at the airport just yet um, check your flight level, matches up with your um, K cars, which should be free free for that one. There's the A330, and the next shot that we're going to do, I'm going to take you through the K, the FMC, I'm pretty sure, or, no sorry, actually I do apologise, I'm going to be taking us through V route. This is another flight planning system that I use, and quite a lot of us use it. You have to register it, download this, um, it's a lot easier. Um, to use a lot quicker and it deals with real flights. So you always just do is click on, what do you call it, um, <coughs> online. This tells you any information you need to use online for VATSIM controlling. A little bit more detail, we'll go into VATSIM a lot later date. Um, but we're not interested in that just now. What we want is the route. So you click on route, click on where airport we're at. So I'm just going to do an example here just for you just to see. I'm going to click on Glasgow to Dublin. Um, and Ireland. It helps if I go to Ireland. Oh. There we go. Ireland. And we go to Dublin. There it gives you an option of flights, um, routes to take. Get the one that's applicable to you with flight routes, etc. Click on the one there. There you can see all the information on this route. So once you've got that route, you just go to export and fill in all the stuff that's needed. So I'm going to quickly, as you see, and by magic it's already done by editing. So we click on here, we, what do you call it, shows you all different aircrafts. But this wee point there, what I just pointed out, I'm not doing an online, so I've just unticked it. Then to download it, go down to FSX, click on the bottom bit, and hey presto, it will now start to download to your PC wherever you put it. 
And that is as easy as that. And then all you have to do is just open up your flight planner in FSX, click on flight planning, load, then look for the route that you've just done, and this will give you a proper route that, um, what do you call it, is a lot easier than trying to sit down and do that other stuff. And it's very good and very quick and very great to use when you're using that sim. And now we click on to the airport, now let's bring up my friend here, the FMC, Fast Gaming's FMC, sorry. It's pretty good system, I like it, um, brings a bit more realism to the flights that I do, so it gives you a whole thing from the flight planning, as you've just seen how I've done that there. Um, I'm actually using the, they call it the FSX route planner for this flight, um, because it, I'm not flying online. Um, but you can use the the route if you ever did. So I'm going to get quickly get rid of all these the NDBs, the first and that. Get rid of the automatic pilot here. These are all controls that you can use. I'll go into more detail on that. Now here we go. This is uh, the FMC, or they probably call something different um, in the Airbus. So I'm just going to quickly show you. There's me entering in some of the waypoints that I've already done. There's a lot on this route that I've done, so I'm just shortening it so you can see. So I'm typing in here, quickly putting in the waypoints, taking them from the FSX kneeboard. I'm just typing waypoints, clicking on. You do this until you've completed your route. There we go. And here's something I should point out. Sometimes you get a double R, so what you do is just check the frequencies, and then click on the one the frequency that's relevant to your route. And that's that. Um, what do you call it? Uploaded there. Quick way of doing it. Um, all your details here, your flight number, your route, your alternative. Let's better enter in our alternative airport, which is Edinburgh, EGPH. We've clearly done that. Sorry about the volume jump here, but I actually realised that was just quite low. But as we were talking about, there's plenty of other stuff that I'm, you can see me messing about in the background there between the big screen and the little screen. And you can see me messing about the MCDU or FMC in the background there. Um, showing you kind of some of the stuff that it can do, at least the settings here. Um, what you call it, bringing up on the autopilot, all the bits that you can input and use. Um, you'll see me using these instruments over here quite a lot. Later on, at another date. Um, but the the FMC allows you to kind of like go to direct to waypoints that may be um, given to you by ATC. So you can just click on your di DIR, DIR, sorry, and click on whatever the waypoint that they give you. You can save your routes once you've done them, as and load them from there as well. Plenty of stuff to do with the FMC. But um, would you call it? <coughs> Um, what do you call it? There's other things you can use on them as well. SIDs and STARS. I'm going to go into that a little touch in a wee minute or two. As you can see, I'm kind of like messing there in the background with it. So I'm going to come out of this screen. I'm going to go back to the A3 ferry cockpit. And I think we better put some power into this. So let's click on some battery. Yay! There we go, some lights. Click on the APU. And we have to click down there, wait the APU to rise. Once that rise to 100%, then we'll kick on the APU generator and we'll get some power. Should have actually done this at the start. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, now we can click on that, no smoking in, and turn on some lights here, the beacon, and whoop, not the wings, the Navin logo. And click on up here, the DIRS. So that's us, we're on and Now here we bring up. My FSFO, right, a lot, of, there is a few bugs with this one, um, as I said, when it comes to landing, but it's actually quite a useful tool, brings a bit of realism, um, we have a second officer. So, what the first thing you have to do here is enter in where we are, VDBD, and we are going to EGPF. And once we've entered that, um, you can click on the runways and that stuff, but we're not doing that just yet because we don't know what runways we're going to do. So how we do that, there's two ways of doing this. One is we're using your map here, and we'll just bring up the map, and then we'll just zoom in. This is the current location just now where we are, VDBT. And as you can see, there's a green arrow there pointing up towards runway 21 left and 21 right. Um, so you know you're going to be taking off with one of those two runways, but until ETC inst uh, instructs us, we don't really know. But we can add that in at a later date. Now the other way here is just clicking on ATIS. 
Um, as you call it, you've got to attain it anyway, as you find out in the takeoff checks um, that FSSO has. So we listen to the ATIS. We'll give us some information here. See, turn your clouds, your temperatures. There's the thermometer. Keep note of that number. And there's the ILS runways that are in use. And there's the departing ones there, 21 left and 21 right. Um, as I said, we're using VFR just solely, just for use today, because I don't want too much interference from me to see. Okay, no. So therefore, we could click on there and just select whatever runway that we get assigned, whenever the case is. And that's it. So basically, let's connect FSS. Oh. So once it connects, there we go, there's the checklist. Um, but we're not going to go to that just now, we're going to go to briefing here just now. You've got a briefing there for your V1, your VR and V2s. You also get instant messages here come from a dispatch giving you your metars and that stuff. So here we go, this is a wee bit for the V reference, um, but you got quite nearly supplied by somebody else. This is the one that I'm going to be using today. As you can see the fuel marked up there. Oh, and as I said, there you go, there are information sent by dispatch to us um, with your metars and TAS, it comes in all the time, um, so we're going to enter in these V1, VR and V2s, we're going to punch them into there, FSFO, if you click on V1 and you enter in the first one, it gives you a whole load of numbers as well, you can use the ones or I'm using these ones, so I'm adjusting it, um, just to that, so that's me at 150, um, there we go there, another report just coming down the bottom there, um, coming up saying a bit of icing reporting and that stuff, so this bit I'm not too sure about really what I'm doing here, so I'm kind of like just guessing here, so 3, 2, 1, I'm just going, it seems to work for the aircraft, um, there we go, and that's it again, as you see, you hear wee bings every so often, so this is the other control panel for it, it controls all your light switches, logos, etc, um, what do you call for flying, your avionics, your pitot heats and that stuff, these as soon as you click on these, these automatically work on the aircraft you're flying. And I'm just going to show you, this is quite good, especially if you're flying at IFR or even on VATSIM. Um, I'll show you that later on. Um, I've just got another report coming through. So let's get up our MCDU, yeah, because DV references we've still got to enter in. Okay, so let's enter in our V1, which is 142. Click on there, that's entered, and the next one is 148 for our VR, click on there, and for V2, 150. Oops, back again, uh, 150, yes. Transition altitudes, how do you find out your transition altitude? Well, you go to your charts, and as you can see, there it is, there are marked it in red, and pointed at it, the current transition level will be 1100. Um, and you just click on that, and it'll enter into it. So as you can see, I'm messing about here with FSSO, so let's click on some lights here, let's get things to do. Watch this, if you need to reduce your speed quickly, here's a quick way of doing it. Right, so you just highlight that, enter in whatever speed that you want, so 220, and down here you can see it, down there, 220. Right, let's get rid of that out of the way, whoops, I've taken him away, let's get him back up. Right. And let's go and enter in an altitude. We know from my SIDS, I'll go into a wee bit later on, um, 6,000 is the first um, altitude that we must be at. See, it automatically kicks in. This is great for a quick way if you're using VATSIM, if you get an instruction to enter it, including, um, what do you call it, headings. As you can see here, I'm entering the, my takeoff rate, which is 2-2, which I'll reduce very quickly. Um, and as I said, the headings, you just type in the headings, same way as what we've done there, just hit enter and it will automatically go down and enter in where the heading is. But at the moment I'm leaving that just now, because I will change that just before takeoff, but at the moment I'm going to set up so that the aircraft is set up so you can track my SIDs when I'm taking off so you can see it with me. I might end up using the FMC um, NDB display because it's a lot more detailed and with the FMS, and it's a lot more better, um, right, I better enter it, there we go, we get the, the barometer set, and we're talking about SID, right, here you go, the SID from V, where I've taken off, um, v, B, VTBD, 
as you can see, we've got down there, we've got an altitude restraint, and there is 6,000 uh, BD021 at or below 6,000. So there's my restraint there. I should actually have a speed restriction in there for 250 or below. So I'm actually made it 220, so I can make the turn just as a takeoff from the runway. As you can see, set off for the runways that we're taking off. We're going to follow that right up to Frank, then up to Via to Lima. And that's it. That's your SID. Easy as that. Um, all your information are on your charts here where it is, and it tells you what to do. Now we did the SID, the standard instrument departure. Now we're going to go on to st start your standard instrument arrival. So I've clicked on EGPF. I'm now selecting a runway that I know is in use, ILS Runway 23. As I live in the flight path for Glasgow Airport, I know that's in use at this moment. So I'm going to scroll down here to the applicable star, which I know is Lanark 1A, which should take me to Margo via Lanark. As you can see, I clicked on the bottom one there, so you can see DCS, which takes me via Dumfriesway. So this is what I want, so I'm going to insert it. As you can see there, it's down there, and I'll automatically add it in. And the next things that I need to go and do now is I need to go and have a look at my chart. So I'll be go there, then we're bringing up the chart here for the star of Lanark. Bingo, bingo, here we go. And now I need to bring up my MCDU. The reason why I'm doing this is because I now need to change a few things. So I'm going to go into my PRF, quickly scroll across here to my transition level, which is 5-0 at the moment. It should be 0 6 0 for my transition. I did that in the other one, which was wrong, so this is me correcting it. So I'll just clear that out of the way. Now we go back down here again, and now we're going to actually add in some altitude restraints into the MCDU. Now my first one I'm going to be writing in here is for Margo. And according to the chart down here, it's 2600. So 2600 is going to be entered. And I'm going to just going to follow up to Margo, click on the right hand side, bingo, there's your altitude restraint in now. And now there's one other one that I need to put in here just now, and this one will have a speed restriction. And that's at Lanark. As it says, it's down here originally for 1800, but I don't want 1800, I want to be at level 7000. So the first thing I'm going to write in is my speed restriction, which is 250 knots, because I'm going to be below 10,000 feet. And I'm putting forward slash 7000, and that gives me my altitude restraint and speed restraint. That's your star. Uh, so that's me covered some stars and SIDs for you, quite briefly. I hope you're going to join me in part 2 here. Part 2 I'm going to be taking you through the before start checklists, um, what do you call it, before take off checklist with um, FSFO and we're going to take off, take off to 10,000 feet and then I'm going to cut the video and I'm going to begin our approach into Glasgow and do a landing in Glasgow, hopefully it's going to be a good one and then we're going to file the prep. Hope you can join me in part 2 of this video. This is Jack Boyle, your VCO. I'll see you in part 2.